Praise be to our Lord Jesus Christ, now and forever. I would like to remind ourselves that we have come here principally to give thanks to God for the mystery of his love, to celebrate God's marvelous graciousness, to celebrate the power of grace, to celebrate the unpredictable designs of divine providence. I've called our reflection a call to heroic service. A call to heroic service. Barely two years ago, we were here for the erection of the new diocese of Ekulobia and the installation of our first bishop, by then the most reverend Peter Ebere of Aleke. Today, that bishop, by indescribable design of providence, has become elevated to the cardinalate. He is now His Eminence, Peter Ebere, Cardinal of Aleke. How good God is. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. To God alone be glory, honor, and never-ending praise forever and ever. Since this event happened, many questions flooded many hearts. The social media did not help matters. They were offering answers, some that were totally out of culpable ignorance, some out of just ignorance, but with goodwill. I would like, therefore, to answer just some of these questions to help us understand more what the Lord has done for us. Who is the cardinal in the Catholic Church? Cardinalate is one of the glorious heritages of the church. Cardinal is an ecclesiastical title used to designate the members of the College of Cardinals who assist the Pope in governing the Catholic Church. With the passage of time, the Church of God, founded by Christ, invented structures and organs that would help her carry on the mission of Christ, the mission of the Redeemer, destined for all peoples of all ages. Having entrusted the church's leadership to Peter and his successors, that is, the popes, the government of which is called the papacy, she created the Sacred College of Cardinals to be the immediate advisors and assistance of the popes. This body has existed from the late antiquity of the church to the present time. However, it has continued to be under ongoing reforms. A brief history will help us. In the sixth century, the title cardinal appears to have achieved currency during the barbarian invasion of Western Europe. At that time, cardinals designated only those bishops whose sees 
had been overwhelmed by insurrection or invasion, and whom Pope Gregory the Great had translated to vacant seas. But if their own churches revived, they were immediately returned to them. In this way, the canons against episcopal pluralism were satisfied. In the 11th century, the Sacred College of Cardinals achieved institutional stability and form. When the reforming popes assigned to cardinal bishops and priests administrative as well as liturgical functions in the Roman Church, and some non-Romans were elevated to the cardinalate. From the pontificate of Leo IX, the cardinal bishops and priests became the principal counselors and assistants of the Holy Father, that is, the popes. Then, by the papal election decree of the year 1059, in the pontificate of Nicholas II, they became the papal electors, a duty attached to the cardinalate office till today. From the pontificate of Leo, that structure became more stable and more defined. Consequently, the cardinalate took a decisive form in the medieval ages with definitive duties and privileges. These duties include, but not limited, to the election of a new pope, which should take place within 15 days of the passing on of the previous pope. However, creation of new cardinals remains the duty of the pope. And under the papacy of Pope Paul VI, he made the consistory a public ceremony. Who can be a cardinal? All the while, all these years, all baptized Catholics could be cardinal until after the canon law code of 1917. This code of canon law set the minimum standard to be priestly ordination. So the minimum requirement now is priestly ordination. Since 1918 then, Cardinals need to be a Catholic priest before appointment to the Cardinalate. The last Cardinal who was a layman was Cardinal Giacomo Antonelli in the year of the Lord 1806. Today, a priest can be a Cardinal like Father Raniero Cantalamesa. Many of you are familiar with his writings and his preachings. He is the preacher of the papal household. He is now Raniero Cardinal Cantalamesa. A bishop can be a cardinal as we have one, an archbishop can be also. In the recent past, we had in this Onitsha province, in the old Onitsha province, Dominic Cardinal Ekandem, who was Bishop of Ekote Bene. While we had then Archbishop Francis Arinze, who was Archbishop of Onitsha and the Metropolitan of the province. He later, much later, became also a Cardinal now Francis Cardinal Arinze. <laughs> Pastoral Office of a Cardinal. The Cardinals are specially called to witness to the faith 
with their sweat and blood whenever and wherever that is required. They are to show uncommon love for God beyond anything else and show courage in matters of faith and morals without fear or favor. Being worthy examples of faith, hope, and charity, they are to be outstanding men of prayer who remain a healing balm and comfort for God's children. The cardinals were read not just as a decoration or an outfit, they were read as an outward sign of their willingness to die for Christ and his church. Red signifies martyrdom. Cardinals accept their vocation of being chief witnesses for the faith. The Pope usually wore red with other cardinals until a Dominican Pope Pius V became Pope and continued wearing his white Dominican habit. From then, the popes started wearing white instead of red till today. However, they argued that there is white martyrdom and there is red martyrdom. Red martyrdom is giving witness to the faith until death, that is the person could be killed. Blood martyrdom, it is called. The white martyrdom, although greatly associated to the life of chastity, total chastity, it is also willingness to witness to the faith, willingness to stand for the truth, willingness to serve God with unshakable faith and confidence. If you ask me, we may say that our brother already became a martyr before he was named a cardinal. The word cardinal is derived from the Latin word cardo, meaning hinge. And in the words of Pope Eugene the Fourth, as the door of a house turns on its hinges, so on the cardinalate does the apostolic see the door of the whole church rest and find support. Cardinalate is a call to heroic service. It is an invitation to be a prince by the bloodline of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Being a prince makes one a disciple because he exemplifies the royal court comportment and values. Our brother Cardinal Peter has been called to this service. He is invited to be a prince. Recall that positions and privileges in the church go with responsibilities and duties. We therefore rejoice with him as we promise him our prayers and unflinching support. Why are we rejoicing? Somebody may ask if this is a call to duty and not a social preferment. The image of the early Roman Christians comes to mind. The early Roman Christian festival Thanksgiving will remind us Thanksgiving for finding their family member worthy of being a martyr. During the era of persecution in the early centuries of the church, Christians were publicly executed to deter others from following the outlawed religion. Instead of mourning, 
the families celebrated their gratulation with gratitude to God for the choice of their members for public execution. Despite their human pain, the family rejoiced that God found them worthy to choose one of them for the honor of the matter's death. Today, we rejoice that Nigeria has been found worthy of the honor of another cardinal in our time. As the martyrdom of early Christians evoked joy and faith, and as the sufferings and death of our early Christian missionaries in Igbo land, especially, and other parts of Nigeria, evoked hope of a future great church, today, the choice of our brother Peter Ebere, Cardinal of Aleke, invites all of us to a deeper faith and greater commitment to witness to the gospel of Christ. Every divine election is a privilege. It is an honor. Recall from the call of the prophets to the choice of the apostles. Christ told the apostles, you did not choose me. No, I chose you. Nevertheless, it is a journey unto blessings and glory. So we rejoice. We celebrate our blessings. We know the journey could be tough. There could be crosses. But the cross notwithstanding, we thank God for the privilege of counting Nigeria worthy of yet another cardinal. The elevation of one of us is an elevation of the local church and elevation of our country, Nigeria. We pray that through the joy, unity, and love which the erection of Colonel Opaleke has unleashed on the country and on all of us, God will bless Nigeria. God will bless Nigeria with greater unity. God will bless Nigeria with more joy. God will bless Nigeria with deeper fraternal love. For our brother, His Eminence Peter Ebere, Cardinal of Aleke, please always remember that you are still a project in progress. Being human, you are still vulnerable. But in the words of St. Paul, the grace, of God, the grace of God is enough for you. The saints and martyrs in heaven are praying for you. The Christians in Nigeria and all over the world, they are praying for you. Your brothers and sisters gathered here, they are, we are praying for you. Do not be afraid. Therefore, you have to recourse to our blessed mother Mary, whose feast we celebrate today. Cling to her for her maternal unfailing assistance. Like the Apostle John, take Mary home and enjoy her powerful maternal intercession. Through the intercession of Blessed Virgin Mary, the Queen of Martyrs, and of the saints in heaven, may God bless the apostolate of our brother, Peter Ebere, Cardinal of Aleke. And may God bless all of us gathered here. May God bless Nigeria through Christ our Lord.